Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a BIOS overview and guide for those of you that recently may have built a computer with this motherboard, which I also recently built a computer with. This is the ASRock Phantom Gaming X870E Nova Wi-Fi. I have built the computer here, as you guys can see here, using mostly Micro Center parts that I picked up. So we have a Liquid 360 AIO that is a King Cool branded AIO up top there with the RGB fans. Okay, so once you're in the BIOS of the Phantom Gaming Nova here, you can see the front page, the, on the main page here it shows the UEFI BIOS version. So we're running the latest BIOS, this is 3.20 or 3.2 as of the time of filming. The processor that's installed in here is the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, a core CPU, and also shows the maximum speed. In this case, we're running stock settings. The total memory, 96 gigabytes. That's across two 48 gigabyte NIMS, as shown here. And then ASRock also shows you the speed that the memory is running at. In this case, 6400 mega transfers. So let's dive into the OC tweaker menu here. So at the top, there is a gaming mode. So I don't really see this of being of much use in any scenario. So I will keep this disabled. I recommend that it stays disabled. Zen 5 Gaming Optimizations, Agisa Default. This is for the intercore latency or core to core latencies for the Ryzen Zen 5 CPUs. So the default is AMD Agisa Default, which follows the Agisa microcode on the BIOS. So that's typically what you're going to leave this at. So next we have the TDP to 105 watt. So if you enable this, you're going to be running eco mode if you're on a dual CCD CPU. But if you're on, say, a single CCD CPU, like the 9700X, for example, that one has a default of 65 watt TDP. So if you enable this, that will actually set, and I like how ASRock actually shows the three different values that it modifies. So it's basically a preset. Next, we have the performance boost. This is basically biasing the CPU to get better Cinebench scores. I don't really see the point of turning this on. This is mainly for people that are trying to push Cinebench overclocking world records and things like that. So next we have the performance preset. This is basically if you want the CPU to have a specific thermal max temperature other than the default, which I believe is 95C for this CPU. So if you want it, for example, to not run above 85C, you can set that in here, and it will also, you can also specify curve optimizer offsets. Now these aren't guaranteed to be 100% stable, especially if you put a more aggressive undervolt. So just keep that in mind. Here you can set the thermal throttle TJ Maxx limit manually. The default, I believe, is 95C. So if you want to raise this for whatever reason or lower this, you can do that here. So next we have CPU overclocking. This is known as OC mode. So if we turn this on, this is basically turning on OC mode. Using this, I believe, will disable PBO and disable all of the automatic boost algorithms. So I prefer not to use this. This is meant for just static overclocking, which is not very useful for everyday usage, but it is something that is there if you wanted to use it. Same thing with the integrated graphics. So this is overclocking the integrated graphics. You can specify a frequency for that. We'll just leave that on auto. And then next we come to the DRAM frequency. This is going to be set either manually by the user or from loading the Expo or XMP profile. And the way you do that is you go down here where it says DRAM profile configuration. We open this up. ASRock has the best implementation of this feature because you don't have to drill down to the SPD section of the memory uh, in the BIOS. You can actually see it right here. And I like how they give you the full table and they show you all the different SPD profiles in a very easy and convenient to access menu. So you guys can see the default would be auto. But they also allow you to load the standard JDEC profile manually that comes with the memory kit. So in this case, this memory kit that we're using, it has a default JDEC profile of 5600. And then it has an XMP profile for 6400. And then they also show the different voltages 
1.1 for the standard and then 1.35 for the overclock profile and that's the one that we have loaded here the DRAM performance mode does I assume this tune stuff like the TREFI for example for more competitive or aggressive for better lower latency so you can try these different settings and see what it does in terms of performance but I just leave it on the AMD Agisa for now that's the default DRAM timing configuration this folder directory is where you will access the primary and secondary timings as well as tertiary and the on die bus termination values are also in here so if you were going to overclock your RAM to say 6000 and you had four sticks of memory for example and this is dual rank so we're talking like 128 gigabytes of RAM you may need to consider tuning this because I don't see any of the other motherboard brands doing this so they give you some insight into what is actually going on behind the scenes so props to ASRock for doing that because they're the only one that seems to do that. And that comes in clutch when trying to run, say, 192 gigabytes of RAM at 6,000 with full stability. Because that is going to require tuning the bus termination values manually. So next we have VDDIO. When you load the XMP profile or Expo profile, ASRock will automatically set these three voltages to whatever the memory profile had. So in this case, 1.35, it typically makes the VDDIO equal the DRAM VDD and DRAM VDDQ. Now you can manually change these if you're overclocking. I do like that they give you this very useful table on the right in the description that shows how these voltages are related to each other mathematically. So you at least have that to go off of. So then next we have the Infinity Fabric, so this is F-Clock. Typically this is going to be 2 gigahertz. And then for the, the U-Clock equals M-Clock. Typically if you're running 6,000 or lower, this would be U-Clock equals Mem-Clock. And then anything above 6,000, we would run this in U-Clock equals Mem-Clock divided by 2. Running in what's known as Gear 2 mode is not a big deal because... You're only sacrificing like 1% performance versus if you're running it in the 1 to 1 ratio, for example. So you still get the benefit of the higher memory frequency. And on top of that, the bottleneck is never really the memory controller. It's always the actual DRAM, like reading or writing from the DRAM itself is much slower than what the memory controller is doing. So that's not a big deal. And then for the SOC voltage... This is going to be dependent on the CPU. ASRock typically, as, as soon as you load an XMP profile of like 6000 or 6400, it's going to default to 1.2 volts, which is kind of like standard. You don't really want to go above 1.2 volts. There is, isn't really much of a reason to do that unless you're really trying to push like a 1 to 1 ratio aggressively for something like 6400 or maybe 6200. Uh, but realistically... This can be as low as like 105 or maybe even 1 volt because I'm running this in a 2 to 1 ratio. But for peace of mind, you know, I don't want to waste too much time tuning it. I'm just going to set it to 1.1. That's a very safe voltage. That's not going to cause anything to blow up. So if you want to prevent the CPU from like burning up or whatever, do not run above 1.2. That's kind of like the upper limit. Um, if you're running one-to-one -one ratio, you typically would need 1.24 or 1.27, like somewhere in there. If you have to go above 1.27, it's not worth it because you're going to be having much higher idle power consumption. And at that point, it's not really worth doing. So 1.1 is where I keep mine in a one-to-two ratio for 100% stability. And then if even with this, I can still claw back the latency by simply tuning TREFI to like 49,000. So it's really, really easy to work around those things. You just have to be aware of those settings changes. So next we have VDDG. These, these are the voltages to from the fabric to the CCD and the fabric on the IO die side. So you don't really need to change any of these for most users. And then we have some more stuff here. You can save the user profile so you can load it next time. So if you have an overclock profile that you built yourself, you can save it to like an S, like a 
a USB thumb drive, and things like that. Next, we're going to move to the advanced menu. So this is where the AMD overclocking menu will be. So let's quickly run through a lot of these. So CPU configuration. If you want to disable the SMT, this is where you would do that. You would do that here. PCIe configuration is going to be next. This is where resizable bar gets enabled, and it's typically always enabled by default now on all modern BIOSes, so you don't really need to do anything here. Onboard devices, this is going to be for the LED behavior and also what to do with the Bluetooth and the, the Wi-Fi, like if you want those to be enabled or disabled. The display priority can also be specified whether you want the discrete graphics card to be preferred or the internal integrated graphics to be preferred. Typically, it's going to default to external graphics because this is a desktop, not a laptop. Next, we have the storage. AHCI or RAID is both supported. We're typically going to use AHCI. And then NVMe configuration, you can see the four different SSDs. This motherboard supports five. SSDs, I currently have four installed. You can see the ACPI configuration will be where suspend to RAM will be enabled. So if you actually are like me and you use sleep mode, this needs to be set to auto. It's That's the default. And then some other things here regarding low power states and what to do with USB ports when in low power states. USB configuration, nothing to do here except just verify. You know, the nice thing about it, it shows you like how many... USB devices are currently connected and things like that. Trusted computing. This is more for the TPM module if you're using an external TPM or the internal TPM. So this is more of the security on the processor. So next we have the three AMD directories, I call them. These are standard across all motherboard manufacturers, meaning... Regardless of what brand of motherboard you're using, whether it's ASRock or somebody else, they should publish all three of these directories in their BIOS because the, these three encompass the standard AMD reference. So this is the AMD Agisa uh, software stack here, just exposed to the user in this UI. So the common BIOS settings are first. In here you have the CPU common options for things like AVX 512, SVM for virtual machines and things like that so are in here you also have things like the watchdog timer and other tools like the prefetcher settings and threat enablement threat enablement if you want to turn off SMT so it's in here so it's kind of redundant with some of the stuff that we see in Azrock's own BIOS but the nice thing about having these three is that you can if you learn all three of these you can buy any motherboard, regardless of whether it's ASRock or somebody else, and you can just navigate to these and do whatever you need to do. And that includes the overclocking. But the CBS has a CPU, the DF common options in here for ACPI and the memory addressing. For example, me memory interleaving is in here. The unified memory controller, so this is going to be the IMC. This is where things like memory context restore will be in here under memory features, for example. But that is just something to be aware of, that all of these things are published in the common BIOS settings. NBIO for the IOMMU mapping and things like that. The USB, whether you're doing spread spectrum or not, those things are in there. The system management unit common options. So this is where you can say, you can tell the BIOS to override whatever the operating system wants to do in terms of core thread scheduling. So for example, if we had a 9950X3D, we can come in here, and then if we want to make the, the CPU always schedule the cache-based cores first, meaning the ones that are for gaming, we can set this to cache. And alternatively, if we want it to always run on the fastest cores, which would be the other CCD, we would set it to frequency. And if we don't care, we would let the driver do it. And I think auto just follows the driver. So things like this are how you can do simple changes in here to get better performance, depending on what the use case is for the computer. Then other things too, like the TDP control, whether you want it to be manually set or if you just want to change the PPT limits and things like that, they're in here as well, as well as eco mode. 
And then the SOC, so system on chip miscellaneous controls. I don't expect people to really need to go in here that much. These are really going to be more for the debug. This is stuff for like if you want to turn on the discrete TPM. If you're if you're like a small business or a medium sized business and you have these as work computers and you're using a discrete TPM for security instead of the built in AMD one, that's where you can enable this manually, for example. Um, but I, it re, in reality, if you install one of those on the motherboard, the auto setting should automatically just use the physical one if it's there. So really, this is just kind of showing people where these settings are in the BIOS. And then the Promontory 21, this is the chipset. There are two of them on the Nova because the Nova is a dual chipset motherboard. So we have the primary and then we also have the secondary. So things like that are in here. Next, we have the AMD PBS settings in here. It's really just going to be basic stuff like the firmware version, things like that. Graphics features and the AMD common platform module. Now, if this motherboard supported external B clock or external clock generators, for example, for asynchronous E clock modes and things like that, then you would have the ability to enable that in here. However, the Nova does not have that. This is something that the Tai Chi has that the Nova does not have, and that's why the Tai Chi is the flagship board. So, but this is where you would go to enable that setting if it was on this motherboard. So, like I said, you can find everything that you need in the AMD directories, provided you know where to go to look for them. And then finally, we come to the AMD overclocking menu. This one, there is a warning that you have to accept if you want to actually access this menu. And then in here, this is where things like precision boost overdrive will be. And if you wanted to do, like, for example, access curve shaper. This is where Curve Shaper is and Curve Optimizer, and you can do per CCD, per core, all that stuff that we've looked at in previous content. So that's kind of a look at the basic settings for this motherboard. You know, there's some other things, there's some tools, like if you want to flash an, a BIOS update, you would use the Instant Flash, for example. If you want to enable or disable the auto driver installer thing that's where this is so there's just kind of tools like that in here harbor monitor this is where you can tune the set the fan profiles for the case fans the aio for example all of those things so security boot priority and then the last one here so that's basically it guys overall this motherboard represents an excellent value i still think this is the king of value if you're someone who's looking to build a new computer featuring either any of the new amd zen 5 cpus it's the amd ryzen 9000 cpus this would be a perfect choice for even the flagship 9950x 3d so let me know your thoughts in the video Hopefully, this has been helpful to those of you that are thinking of getting the ASRock Nova. We will be doing more content featuring this motherboard. We'll do, look at some overclocking guides and things like that in the future. Once again, thank you for tuning in, everyone, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.